ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Shrimad Bhagavatam Canto 7 Chapter 5 Pala the saintly son of Hiranyakashipu text number 8 Kriham anitam ahaya You don't read the Sanskrit? Yes. <laughs> oh, here's the transliteration. <laughs> Kriham anitam ahuya Praradam daitya yajaka Prashasya slakshnaya vacha Sam sama prichanta samu samobi Kriham anitam ahuya Paradam daitya yajaka Prashasya shlaksnaya vacha Sama prichanta Sami sama bi Yamanitam ahuya Paradam daitya yajaka Prashasya shlakshnaya vacha Di Dami Yamanita ahuya Paradam daitya yajaka Vashasya shlakshnaya vacha Samapri chandam samabhi Kriham To the place of the teachers Shanda and Amarika Anitam Brought Ahuya calling paradam pralad i wonder why it says said a pralad why is it paradam in most languages but, but why Where R is the same as L. Oh, yeah. So it's pronounced. So my name is Paradananda. <laughs> Paradananda. Instead of Praladananda. But so Radha means also bliss. Yeah, Rad. Same thing in, in Russian. Rat. Oh, that's that's Hindi. Radhasti. Daitya Yajaka. Daitya Yajaka. The priest of the demon Haranyakashipu. Parasya, Prashasya, by pacifying. Shlakshnaya, with, with a very mild. Vacha, voice. Samprichanta, they question. Samabhi, by very agreeable words. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada. When Haranikashipu's servants brought the boy Prarada or Pralada back to the Gurukul, 
the place where the Brahmins taught the boys. The priests of the demons, Chanda and Amarka, pacified him with very mild voices and affectionate words. They inquired from him as follows. Purport, Chanda and Amarka, the priests of the demons, were eager to know from Prahlad, Maharaj, who was the Vaishnavas who came to instruct him in Krishna consciousness. The purpose was to discover the names of these Vaishnavas. In the beginning, they did not threaten the boy, because when threatened, he might not identify the real culprits. Therefore, they very mildly and peacefully inquired as follows. So again, there are many aspects of speech, of which here it says, uh, mildly and peacefully. So, anuvega karam vakyam, satma priya. So they exhibited the quality of priya, not truthfulness, not also anuvegam, they didn't try and agitate his mind, but neither are they truth, truthful or beneficial, nor do they follow scripture, because they were demons. In any case, we know in the, in the jungle there are different kinds of animals, there are ferocious animals like tigers, and there are very mild animals like the deer. But whether they're ferocious or mild, they're, they're animals. So sometimes the demons are very mild and peaceful, and sometimes they're ferocious. In any case, they're demons. So text nine. My dear Prahlad, all peace and good fortune unto you. So... There's a technique of torturing people. It's called the good cop and the bad cop. You always need a good cop to soften the person up, and then you need the bad cop in case they don't get soft. Or if you have the bad cop, then when the good cop comes in, then they think, oh, what a relief, I got a friend here. (laughs) Kindly do not speak lies. Just reply with the truth. These boys you see are not like you. They do not speak in a deviant way. So if you're amongst the demons, you should become a deviant. How have you learned these instructions? How has your intelligence been spoiled in this way? What does that say? In the uh, kingdom of of the blind or fools? Kingdom of the fools, it's folly to be wise. You never heard that? The kingdom of fools. Where ignorance is bliss, it's folly to be worse. So here's an example of that. Prahlad was just a boy, and therefore his teacher had thought that if he pacified the little boy, he would immediately speak the truth, revealing the secret of how the Vaishnavas came there to catch him, to teach him lessons in devotional service. It was surprising, of course, that in the same school, the other boys of the deities were not polluted. Only Prahlad Maharaj was supposedly polluted by the instruction of the Vaishnavas. The main duty of the teachers was to inquire to who those Vaishnavas were that came to teach Prahlad and spoil his intelligence. O oh, best of your family, has this pollution of your intelligence been brought about by you or by your enemies. We are all your teachers and are very eager to hear about this. Please tell us the truth. Prahlad Maharaj's teachers were astonished that a small boy could speak such exalted Vaishnava philosophy. Therefore, they inquired about the Vaishnavas who stealthily taught it to him in order that these Vaishnavas might be arrested and killed in the presence of Prahlad's father, Hiranyakashipu. If you go out and preach, you may get arrested and killed before a Haranikashipu. Prahlad said, Maharaj replied, Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whose external energy was cre- has created the distinction of my friend and my enemy by diluting the intelligence of men. Indeed, I am now actually experiencing this although I have previously heard of it from authoritative sources. 
Her point is stated in the Bhagavad Gita 8, 5, 18. Vidya Vinaya Sampane Brahmani Gavi Hastini Shuni Chaiva Swapake Cha Pandita Samadarshanaha. The humble sages, by virtue of true knowledge, see with equal vision a learned and gentle Brahmana, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog eater, outcast. Pandita, those who are actually learned, the equipose, advanced devotees, who have full knowledge of everything, do not see any living entity as an enemy or a friend. Instead, with broader vision, they see everyone as part of Krishna. As confirmed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Jivaras Rupahoy, Krishnera Nityadas. Every living entity being part of the Supreme Lord is meant to serve the Lord, just as every part of the body is meant to serve the whole body. As servants of the Supreme Lord, all living entities are one, but a Vaishnava, because of his natural humility, addresses every other living entity as Prabhu. A Vaishnava sees other servants to be so advanced that he has much to learn from them. Thus he accepts all other devotees of the Lord as Prabhus, masters. Although everyone is a servant to the Lord, one Vaishnava servant. Although everyone is a servant of the Lord, one Vaishnava servant, because of humility, sees another servant to be his master. Understanding of the master begins from understanding of the spiritual master. Yasya prasada bhagavat prasado yasya, yasya prasadan nagati kutopi. By the mercy of the spiritual master, one receives the benedictions of Krishna. Without the grace of the spiritual master, one cannot make any advancement. Sakshat dwari twena samasta shastriya. Uktasyata vyava bhavayata eva sadvi. Kintu prabhur yak priya eva tasya bande guru shi charanaravinda. Spiritual master is to be honored as much as the Supreme Lord because he is the most confidential servitor of the Lord. This is acknowledged in all revealed scriptures and followed by all authorities. Therefore, I offer respectful basis unto the lotus feet of such a spiritual master who is a bona fide representative of Sri Hari Krishna. The spiritual master, the servant of God, is engaged in the most confidential service of the Lord, namely delivering all the conditioned souls from the clutches of Maya, in which one thinks, this person is my enemy and that one is my friend. Actually, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the friend of all living entities, and all living entities are eternally servants of the Supreme Lord. Oneness is possible through the understanding, through this understanding, not through artificially thinking that everyone of us is equal to God. Well, one of us is God or equal to God. The true understanding is that God is the Supreme Master, that all of us are servants of the Supreme Lord and are therefore on the same platform. This has already been taught to Prahlad Maharaj by his spiritual master, Narada. But Prahlad was nonetheless surprised by how a bewildered soul can think one person his enemy and another his friend. As long as one adheres to the philosophy of duality, thinking one person a friend, and another an enemy, he should be understood to be in the clutches of Maya. The Mayavadi philosopher who thinks that all living entities are God and are therefore one is also mistaken. No one is equal to God. The servant cannot be equal to the master. According to the Vaishnava philosophy, the master is one and the servants are also one. For the distinction between the master and servant must continue even in the liberated stage. In the conditioned stage, we think that some living beings are our friends, while others are our enemies. And thus we are in duality. In the liberated stage, however, conception is that God is the master and that all living entities, being servants of God, are one. Namo Vishnu Vraya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vrantha Swami Tanamane 
Namaste, Saraswatunde, Vegoravani Vicharne, Nervishesha, Shindivadi, Paskatya de Satarne. Purusha Prakriti Stohi, Bhunte Prakritir Jangunai, Karna Guna Sango, Sya Sat Asat, Yoni Janmisu. The living entities in the material world follow the ways of life, enjoying the three modes of material nature, thus they meet with both good and evil amongst the various species. So that's the, the nature of the material world, sad asad. Sometimes we think something is good, sometimes we think it's bad. If someone gives us something, they're good. If someone takes something away from us, it's bad. Therefore, as long as one is in the conception that they have something, idam adya maya labba, idam maya imam prapse minoritam, idam asti imapime, bavishati punaritanam, idam adya maya labdva. So much have I gained today. Before you go to sleep, you can think about what you've gained. And if it's not Krishna consciousness, then whatever you gain, in your, you should mentally give up so you can go to sleep. Idamaya maya blava imam prapse minorita. So much by my mental concoction do I think I'm getting in this material world. Just like we think it's our body. But how long and what control do we have of this body? We have some free will. We can decide if I'm going to eat something or not. But we have to eat something. We have some free will. We can decide to go to sleep or not, even during class. Or we can wake up. (laughs) So we have our free will. But it's limited. Because once we eat something, we don't know what's happening to it. Once we go to sleep, we don't know what we're going to think about so we may think ourselves to be very much in control, but actually we're very much controlled. Now we can decide what we're going to be controlled by, either the spiritual energy or the material energy. And the material energy has certain control by the material energy means we're anxious to get something and we're lamenting that we can't quite get what we want. And ultimately Prabhupada explains in the purport, that we're hankering to become God and we're lamenting over the fact that we can't become God. Anyone who helps us become God or helps us think that we're God, they're our friends. Idam adyamaya ladva imam prapse manoritam idam astiyam apime bavishati purardhanam asomaya hatakshadror He is my enemy and I have killed him. And all my other enemies are also be killed. Ishvaraham maham bhogi siraham balavan sukhi. I am the lord of everything. Or I'm on my way to become the lord of everything. It's only time separates me. Ishvaraham maham bhogi. And I'm enjoying so many things. Siraham. I am perfect. Anyone who appreciates me, they're on their way for perfection. And anyone who criticizes me, they're on the way to hell. Siraham Balavan, and I have so much strength. I am so powerful. Even Krishna is amazed. Even Krishna has to come. Even as the super soul of my heart is learning from me. <laughs> Balavan Sukhi. And I am happy because anyone who has so much wealth and, and so many other things and all the enemies, they just fall. As soon as they, someone thinks that they're my enemy, then material nature immediately takes care of them. So, of course, I'm happy because everything I desire or want, I'm immediately receiving. Siraham Balavan Sukhi. Adyo Maya Hatak Adyo my hatakshatra, Hanishe chaparana pi, Ishvaraham aham bogi, you know, no. Adyo bi janavana asmi, that 
I shall perform some sacrifice. Adyo bhita ravana asmi kanyosti sadri shomaya yakshe dasyami modisha itya agyana vimohita. I am surrounded by rich and aristocratic relatives. I shall perform some sacrifice. I shall give some charity. And this way I shall rejoice. And this way the demoniac will be wielded by ignorance. So it's not that Harani Kachipu was the only demon. And when Lord Nishingadev killed the demon and his followers, all the demons in the universe disappeared. No, he was simply the best of the demons, that's all. There were many other good demons. Similarly, in modern society, the whole world is deluded. Trivira Gunavaya Bhavara Abiksara Vidam Jagat Mohitam Nabijananti Mame Byak Paramabhya. I'm never manifested by the to the foolish and unintelligent. For them I am covered by the three modes of material nature, and so the deluded world knows me not, who am unborn and inexhaustible. Deluded by the three modes of material nature, Trivira Gunamaya Bhavara, Abik Sarami Dam Jagat, Mohitam Nabijananti. Mame byak param avyam. They don't understand me from above the most. So the whole world is moving in delusion. And because they're moving in delusion, therefore everything they do is wrong. They have no conception. Just like I'm supposed to give a lecture on racism. But the whole world is racist. There's not one group of people who are racist. Anyone who's in the bodily concept of life is a racist. And everyone has, there's, if there are seven billion people on this planet, there are seven di- billion different people who are, ra- who are racist. And the only person that they think is worthy of respect is themselves. Doesn't matter if you're black or white or red or yellow or green, doesn't matter what color you are, you're the center. And therefore people who appreciate you, they're your friends. And, Amongst your friends, <clears throat> you can get together against someone else, but ultimately, after you defeat your enemy, then you'll fight amongst yourselves, because everyone is just fighting for supremacy here. Survival and supremacy. Therefore, no one is actually the friend in this mature world. Everyone is just envious of everyone else, although temporarily they may become friends, But due to the Bali concept of life, ultimately they think their body is the ultimate center of existence. Their conceptions have to reign supreme. Their feelings are the most important. So in such a deluded condition of life, people are going around as crazy people. Everyone is crazy. And sometimes when it's a little less crazy, we say that there is normal. Normal means in the insane asylum, people are not killing each other. They're waiting, they're planning to kill each other. Instead of actually killing each other, they're just planning how to do it. So that's called peace. And when they actually start killing each other, then it's called war. But there's not so much difference between peace and war. Everyone is just on the verge of following their delusions to the ultimate conclusion which is to establish themselves as supreme, and anyone who doesn't accept that, they're enemies, and they must be killed. And my friends, as long as they keep me as part of the Supremes, then they're my friends. So Prahlad Maharaj couldn't understand that, because he didn't have so much experience as yet. He was only five years old. Atmavan Manyate Jagat. He thought everyone else was Krishna conscious. But he learned from his teachers that actually everyone is a fool and rascal. And amongst the fool and rascals, there are some who are more foolish. And those are the ones who usually get a big ed- uh, an education. As Shul Bhaktivinoda Kaur said, by birth everyone is a, born a shudra, kalo sudra sambhava. And by modern education they become less than an animal. So the more one is educated, the more it becomes difficult to understand reality. And especially the reality that we're not this body. Now, without understanding we're not this body, then we're simply wasting our time in the material world. 
Sometimes we may appear as nice, gentle animals, reciting, reciting poetry and doing all, creating art and all different things. And sometimes we appear to be vicious animals, robbers, killers, soldiers, whatever. But they're all animals because they're all in the bodily concept of life. And simply they're going to have to come back and get another body. The gentle, the weak, the strong, the ferocious, they're all simply circulating the cycle of birth and death. Only when one gets out of the bodily concept of life by hearing Bhagavad Gita, that the body is not ourselves, and that we should work for Krishna, who is the proprietor of the universe, and we should find out what Krishna wants us to do through his, uh, his representatives, his actual representatives, and we do things to please Krishna, can we actually be doing anything of, of value in this world? Now, if we want to get the, appro- the appreciation of fools and rascals, then we'll try and do so many different things to satisfy them. But they'll never be satisfied until we surrender to them. That's all people want. You surrender to me, or you surrender to my boss, and I'm just a representative. My boss is ultimately, if it comes down to it, our acharyas or anikashipu. Or maybe in the mode of passion, maybe it's some industrialist, or maybe in the mode of goodness, it's some uh, environmentalist or poet or something. But they're all in the bodily concept of life. And we try and please them, then we'll also remain in the bodily concept of life. Simply intellectually understanding the difference between our body and ourselves will not help us very much. Only when we follow Mahajano Yena Kata Sabhanda. Only when Dharmasitatvam Nihitam Guhayam Mahajano Yena Kata Sabhanda. Only when we choose a leader and we follow them do we get the result. Now we want to get out of the Bali concept of life. We have to choose a leader like Srila Prabhupada who is in the Krishna conscious concept of life, the spiritual concept of life, and follow him. And if we follow his representatives, then he also be, we have to see that they're actually following Prabhupada. If we think there's some other way to gain out of the bodily concept of life, other than following the actual acharyas, then that's the only product. That means that we're not serious. That actually we want to, we've chosen some other leader and we're following them. Because ultimately, there are so many people who claim they're following the Acharya, and they only partially follow. So it's not that. There is, there are also varieties in ignorance. Generally speaking, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, four kinds of pious people approach him, and which means they also approach Krishna's representatives, and they follow, but they want some material result. So we should not think that these people are bad because we're amongst them and we don't think we're bad, so why should we think they're bad? But we should recognize what result we're looking for and not become so deluded by it. We should, once we recognize it, or as Krishna says, nanyang gunebhyas kartaram drashta eva nupashiti gunebhyas chaparam veti madhvavam sodhigashiti. When you see that there is nothing beyond the three modes of material nature and that the Supreme Lord is transcendental to all of them, then you can know my spiritual nature. So we should know that when we can actually see things clearly, then we can actually get out of maya. Now, if we're in the Bali concept of life, even to a little bit, even to the level of Brahma, still we have to get out of that bodily concept of life by seeing what is causing, what am I attached to, what activity I'm doing that's putting me into illusion. What conception do I have that's putting me into illusion? We have to be able to self-examine. Swadayaya. We have to be able to examine ourselves so that we can find out what we're doing wrong so we can do the right thing. Because when we're doing the wrong thing, generally we fall unconscious. And when we're unconscious to reality, then it, we seem perfectly, perfectly at home being in Maya. It's not that when we're in Maya, 
that we feel uncomfortable. Actually, we feel comfortable being in Maya. It's when we're trying to get out of Maya that we feel uncomfortable. No one feels uncomfortable when they're asleep. Generally, if they're dreaming nice dreams, that they become rich and famous, and they feel quite comfortable. And if someone wakes them up, they feel very uncomfortable. Why did you do that? What are you trying to do to me? You know, I was, I was having a good time, and you spoiled it. Go away, come back tomorrow. Even if the alarm clock wakes us up, <laughs> you rascal, you spoiled my dream. So it may be uncomfortable in the beginning, but we have to be, put ourselves, be prepared to be uncomfortable, especially make the false ego a little uncomfortable. And the false ego is uncomfortable to see everyone else equal to ourselves, at least on the spiritual platform. Now to compare it to God, we're all inferior. And if we think that anyone is better than me and we become envious of them, that why does this person have more material assets than we do, how much more envious will we be of God? So we are envious of Krishna's part and parcels. Imagine how much enviousness we have towards God, who has everything, eternally. There's no competition. We can't compete with him. Here we may be proud of our little bit of opulence, but compared to Krishna, we're all insignificant. It's like someone has sitting on top of a little hill and thinking he's on the top of the hill, but in the background is Mount Everest. But he's thinking he's proud. He's so how high he is compared to everyone else. But compared to Mount Everest, everyone is quite on the ground. So compared to Krishna, we're all quite on the ground. So if we can appreciate even Krishna's part and parcels, then we can appreciate more easily Krishna. We give our enviousness towards those who are in front of us, then it'll be easier to become non-envious of those who can't we, we can't pr- quite see yet. So Amanda, uh, San- Shananda and Amarika, they were products of enviousness, associates of Hiranyakashipu, trying to become God, and therefore they cannot understand Prahlad Maharaj's equ- equ- equanimity of vision. And Prahlad Maharaj, seeing everyone as a tiny, insignificant part and parcel of Krishna, could not understand the big fuss about trying to get ahead an illusion, trying to get the best dream possible, rather than waking up. So if we're trying to improve our dream, this material world, then we're wasting our time. If we try and wake up, then we can actually do something good for ourselves and everyone else. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Any questions, comments? By your lotus feet. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Uh, here, Sri Prahlad Maharaj t- teaches us not to uh, fall into duality too much or unnecess- unnecessarily. <clears throat> At the same time, uh, when some someone who is an obvious uh, rascal uh, perishes, some torturing uh, dictator or some some serial murderer or something is um, caught or put to an end, uh, we may feel, if not a little glad, at least a little approval that something, some, some, someone has come to an end. So is that something we should um, uh, overcome? Uh, uh, such, a, such an emotion of being glad that some, someone who seems to be an obviously bad person has come to an end? Yes. <laughs> it's part, part of the duality. Dira, Dira, Janat, Priyo, Priyakaro. The, the six Goswamis didn't have such a vision. So we have to understand that this poor soul has been deluded by the modes of material nature. So why should we be glad that now he's going to have to suffer? Being glad like that, we'll probably have to 
follow his thinking about person in that way enviously, then we're probably going to have to follow his footsteps. It's like Shuniti, when Dhruva Maharaj was angry at his his father and his stepmother, Suruchi, then Suniti told Dhruva Maharaj, you know, don't think ill of anyone. It's very bad. It's poisonous. What is the value of it? We're trying to think devotionally. Why add poison to it? Vidya vanaya sampane brahmani gavi hastane. We're not supposed to be envious of the cow, or the elephant, the dog, and the dog eater. So why should we be envious of anyone else? Yes. Okay. This is a, a question that I'm working upon for a long time in, inside myself. I mean, in my, in my life. Uh, this verse that you've just quoted, and I think it's also in the purport, uh, Pandita Samadarshina, that we should see equally. But um, if someone is a dog eater and persists being a dog eater, then this is a person's choice and a bad choice. And sometimes uh, it's even an uh, educated person who makes a bad choice. So I can theoretically see that he is a spirit soul, but uh, I can't see him equally as good as, let's say, a devotee who makes a good choice. You're not supposed to see that. You're supposed to see simultaneously one but different. You're supposed to love the, or as Jesus Christ said, don't hate, hate the sin, not the sinner. So we should see the soul and love the soul and feel compassion towards the fact that they're making the wrong choice. What's that? Not easy. Oh, it's not supposed to be easy. <laughs> if it was easy, we'd all be in the spiritual world. <laughs> we have to develop the desire to think, see like that. It takes, pra- it takes knowledge and practice. Otherwise, if there's no practice, if we don't, we're not, we're faced with with everyone who loves us all the time and appreciates us, th- then that would be very easy. But when we're faced, try to be positive and Krishna conscious with people who are actually invoke within us the opposite, then we have to, we're challenged. We have to overcome it. We have to make progress. That's our advancement. But, yes. but we do have a license to not feel good about a person, let's say, torturing devotees or someone, some rascal tortures devotees, we can feel angry at the person. Yeah, you can feel angry at them. That's, that's allowed. Because we're not, we're not in Shantaras. <laughs> so we can, we have spiritual anger because they're Krishna's devotees, like Arjuna or Hanuma. So that, that anger is allowed. If one attacks, Krishna or Krishna's devotees, we can become angry. Well, I don't know, you know, anger, spiritual anger. But so spiritual. We should not hate them, but just be angry on them. Like this. Or, oh. Well, Hanuman, I don't think he was angry as far as what's the difference between anger and hate. I'm not exactly clear, but in other words, we should be Krishna conscious. But we should fight for Krishna as Krishna's instrument. As Krishna also has his discrimination. He comes and kills the demons and protects the devotees. He doesn't come and kill devotees sometimes and sometimes protect demons. He has his philosophy, he has his judgment also. And when he comes and kills the demons, of course, he remains Christian conscious because he's, he understands that these are my children, but they have to be punished for their benefit, for the benefit of others. So, yeah, we should be Christian conscious, but we should become angry on behalf of Krishna. Without anger, he can't fight, according to Bhagavad Gita. What that's like, you'll have to tell me when you experience it. That's a spirit, you know, to be transcendental, that when you're angry, fighting on behalf of Krishna, at the same time you don't become envious, that's 
take some uh, advancement. I don't think if we were on a battlefield of Kurukshetra, I know if I was on the battlefield of Kurukshetra and I had a fight against the enemy, when I was shooting the arrows, they would be, you know, little hearts at the end of it. I love you. <laughs> Here's a token of my love. <laughs> ah. Oh, I feel, I can feel the love that you have for me. No, the anger has to be there, but it has to be spiritual. Krishna has to be there. But then we find Arjuna when he's fighting against Ashwatthama, it said that Arjuna's eyes were red and Krishna's eyes were like lotus petals. So there's a difference between how transcendental we can be, how transcendental Krishna is, and how transcendental anyone can be, even Arjuna. Yes. We also hear that in <clears throat> in the evenings they would dine together, Arjuna and Duryodhana, very civilly. To, how 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 does one do this? When because they were transcendental. Even Arjuna is transcendental, but when he plays the part of a warrior, you know he has a, in the material world. Krishna can play the part of a warrior because he's all pervasive, not be affected at all. But when you're playing the part of a warrior, you have to manifest those those particular elements. So they were transcendental, and therefore they, they could focus in different situations. They could develop different types of mentality. But when you have the mentality that you're trying to kill someone, then it, you can't be too transcendental. I mean, you're transcendental, but there has to be a certain, you can't mix all the rasas together, or like, you know, Madhurya, Sakya, and also Bibatsu, Ghastly. Well, you can, but it's more difficult. Yes. Okay, in this in the case when demon attacks the devotees, then they are angry. What about when one devotee is nasty to another devotee, or one devotee you can be angry with both of them? <laughs> <laughs> If you want to be angry, there's always an opportunity. <laughs> I know in the airport we were distributing, I think by the prayers of the devotees, Krishna would send demons so the devotees could get into a fight and, and, and manifest their anger. And then I noticed when we stopped praying, then Krishna stopped sending demons to fight with us. We got tired of it. <laughs> no, generally speaking, the devotees see when two devotees are fighting each other, they see they remain aloof from it. They don't get involved necessarily. If they can't solve the problem, they don't get involved in it. Now, if you're the temple president and two people are trying to kill each other in the temple, you might try to stop them. <laughs> you may have a responsibility, but it's just two other devotees that are having a disturbance with each other. Then Prabhupada mentioned about Brahmananda and Gargamuni. They were like the original leaders of the Hare Krishna movement in New York. Gargamuni was Brahmananda's brother and Brahmananda was the temple president. And they used to fight. And the devotee, what's that? Yeah, they were always fighting with each other. Only sometimes they agreed. <laughs> <laughs> One time Virgin and myself went to, I think it was, 26 Second Avenue, 20, 61 Second Avenue. We were in New York and we were buying some things for the Buffalo. Where we were. And uh, we went to the original spiritual sky shop, which is Gargamuni and Brahmananda Prabhus. And Brahmananda was trying to sell Gar uh, Virjan this incense because we didn't have these insects, incense sticks at that time. We were had this like the stand and we put this charcoal on, or this uh, gum, flavored gum, that we, and we burn it. And we put a charcoal and then burn the charcoal. On top of it, we put the gum. And it was flavored gum, so it, it was our incense. So I looked at the stand he was giving Burjan. I said, Burjan, you know, that looks pretty weak. <laughs> I, I, I would entrust it. And, and Brahmananda Gargwani took me up outside and said, look, Prabhupada gave us his service, you know. <laughs> 
You want to go peaceful or is <laughs> So Bergdahl bought it. We took it back to Buffalo, put that charcoal on it, lit the charcoal, put the incense on it and the charcoal. The incense caught on fire, the charcoal kind of caught on fire, and the, the incense burner caught on fire too. So that much they agreed. <laughs> but they used to fight all the time. And the devotees in the temple were disturbed because everyone, you know, just like here, everyone lived in the same room. It was one room for everyone. And so they they told Prabhupada, you know, th these brothers, they just constantly fight. And they they were like, they were really, you know, Brahmananda Prabhu was a wrestler. Kargamuni was like, you know, didn't care. My, my brother's a wrestler. I'll mean, <laughs> do it as never necessary. So Prabhupada said, it's all right. Don't worry about it. He said that just like two little pups in the same litter. So, you know, it appears that they're fighting, but there's no real consequence to it. So most of the time it should be like that. <laughs> but if it gets serious, then we have to do something. <laughs> Anything else? Yes. Um, could you just give advice how to avoid the danger to artificially look equal to everyone? So that you would, for example, when you would have to react, for example, that you would just take this, um, this fact so that everyone are equal um, as um, the as the mean for laziness, so that you would use that fact for your laziness, so that you would say, I don't have to act because we are all equal, so it's not a problem in that way. You mean when you're supposed to act? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, how to, for example, avoid this danger of, um, of escaping from the situation where you were supposed to act? Um, Can you give me an this. example? Yeah, um, okay. So, for example, that you. Um, that you would have, that you, your brother, for example, would have a problem, I don't know, in school, for example, and that there would be some who are, I don't know, attacking him in that way. And then you would say, for example, okay, I don't have to do anything because he, they are all spirit soul. I would, I will rather, um, make my spiritual development further and one, one get involved in that, for example. Yeah, just hire someone to take care of them. <laughs> but I mean, what, what to do? You have to use your intelligence. The uh, You can see everyone equally, but we also have to see people according to the modes of material nature that they're being impelled by. So if we have a duty towards someone or something, then if we have a duty to protect someone, we have to see that that's our duty. It's not that we see every, that only we see everyone transcendentally. We see that at the same time we see the conditioned nature that people are acting under. We act accordingly, especially when we're dealing with an ordinary situation. So then, Krishna will give the intelligence if we understand things properly, what to do to rectify the situation. Krishna, that was Arjuna's thing. Uh, everyone is equal. These are my friends and my relatives. How can I fight? Krishna didn't agree. He said, you have to externally act according to your duty, and internally you have to be Krishna conscious. Thank you very much. Grantharaj Srimad Bhagavatam Kijai. Srila Prabhupada Kijai. Gaur Premanande.